Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, today we're going to be talking about um, sort of something that you should consider if you're doing memory overclocking, which is sort of the heat management for your entire actual system, not, not just the memory sticks themselves. So here um, we have a very simplified, uh, you know, PC build. So, you know, you have your CPU, your memory, your motherboard, your GPU, and your power supply. And of course, it's in the lovely metal box known as a case. Um, typically, your air intake is going to be in the front here. So that's where your fresh air is going to come in from. So in this first sort of half of the case, you're going to get, well, actually, sort of this area. Um, you're going to get basically room temperature air. And as it progresses over the actual components in your system, it's going to get steadily warmer. Um, depending on just how much heat the components are producing at the time. Now, if you're running a memory... Uh, you know, if you're uh, stability testing your memory, then you're going to have two sources of basically two major sources of heat in your system, your CPU um, and your memory sticks themselves. Now, the memory sticks, they don't really produce that much heat um, themselves. You're looking at like single digit wattage per stick. Um, so, yeah, it's not really going to get that hot in this scenario. The CPU is also not really going to get that hot because memory tests are not about hammering your... Uh, CPU's com like compute capabilities, they're all about hammering the memory access, which uh, tends to be kind of slow and low power consumption as a result of that. So in this configuration, you know, if you're running a uh, mem test, uh, you're going to maybe be pulling, uh, kind of depends on the CPU, but let let's say 50% 50, uh, 50 of max CPU power. So uh, on a, like, 9900K or something, you might be looking at, like, uh, 100 watts CPU, and then, you know, plus 10 to 20 watts for the memory system, depending on what exactly your memory configuration is. So, actually, I just realized I have the fires over there, so I, <laughs> I, I should use a different layer for that. Actually, that's a good idea. Bam. But still, um, so, you know, your system might be pulling in, um, so... Mem uh, test, you might be pulling in about 100 watts. But again, if you have a lower core count CPU or a lower power CPU or just, you know, like if you're running a Ryzen 3600, you're going to be looking at like 30 watts of CPU power consumption and maybe, uh, again, still the same 20 watts of memory power consumption because the memory doesn't really care um, what exactly your CPU is pulling. But there's an upper limit on something like what a Ryzen 3600 can pull, right? And that's uh, well, that's well below 100 watts, because uh, even the, like, 8-core uh, 3700X, if you're running Prime 95, you're going to be just about nudging up against that 100-watt limit. So, uh, so a memory test isn't going to get anywhere near that. So you're going to be pulling about 100 watts for, for memory testing, um, maybe. And uh, the thing is, your memory might end up at, uh, and I should have kept my colors open, your memory might end up at, like, 45 degrees, Celsius and your CPU might be sitting at like 60 degrees Celsius. So that's that's all well and good, but um, what happens? But right now, basically, you know, the air temperature in this area is going to be basically room temperature. Um, and then your hottest area is going to be this area, which is, well, depends kind of on your cooling configuration. But let's say you have a tower air cooler. This area is going to be the hottest because that's typically where you're going to have your exhaust. Um, so in this scenario, your memory will be very, very stable. Now, what you can run into sometimes is that you'll pass your mem test in this, uh, in this sort of operate in, in these operating conditions, and then you go and you play a game and you start getting memory-related crashes. So things like uh, memory management blue screens, uh, driver IRQL, IRQL not less or equal. Um, I think system service check exception, like there's one that's like some, uh, some uh, three words that start with an S and then exception at the end of that. That one I think is also occasionally triggered by memory instability. Um, so there's a whole bunch of various, uh, crashes that you can suddenly run into when it's like, but my system passed mem test. And the thing you're not considering is that, uh, in that scenario, depending on like how much airflow, well... Uh, ba basically what's happening is if you're playing a game and I just realized that for some reason there okay now it works weird um, so basically what you're not uh, considering is that your GPU can be anywhere from 200 to 
500 watts. That's kind of the upper limit of what you can cram into a single GPU. Um, this is doable on air cooling. It's, it's not fun to do on air cooling, but it is doable. Um, so anywhere from 200 to 500 watts of heat are now being dumped into your system, especially 500 watts, like you're not dissipating that with a blower heatsink in a million years. So um, if you have a card that's capable of like running cool enough uh, while producing 500 watts of heat, uh, yeah, it's going to have an open air cooler and it's going to be dumping 50 to 100 percent of that heat directly into the case and right basically well the thing is it's going to dump it out the side of itself but it's slowly like uh, depending on just how bad your case airflow situation is it's going to pile up partially in front of the card because the thing is the card doesn't really like most cards don't actually force the air upwards they just kind of blast it out the side and then it kind of splashes off your side panel and splashes off the motherboard um and you know with the motherboard it's going to really splash back in front of the card whereas if it splashes off the side panel it's likely to get split in both directions so half of it'll go up half of it'll go down but the thing is exhaust air temperature for gpus can be very very high um, and the reason why it can be very very high is that gpu heat sinks and more like gpu dies are very efficient in thermal transfer so in order to maintain an acceptable operating temperature on a GPU core of like 70 to 85 degrees Celsius, uh, the air temperature coming out of the heatsink can be very easily in the uh, range of 40 to 60, maybe like 60 plus degrees. Okay, like that that is not actually impossible for your air temperature. So now you have all of this very hot air going up into your system, right? And uh, the problem with this is, well, if the ambient temperature around your memory sticks is 42, well, let, let's say, you know, it, your memory sticks are now sitting in, four, in a 40 degree environment, right? Previously, in a 20 degree environment under full load, your memory sticks were going to hit about 45 degrees Celsius. Well, now, even if they're not really like, even again, it's you're playing a game, so there's going to be some load on the memory. It's not going to be as heavy as a mem test, probably. I'm not sure. I've never actually bothered to check how much memory load various games have, but uh, depending on the game, it may or may not have a pretty decent amount of load on your memory. So the problem is, though, that memory basically has very, like, depending on just how aggressive your memory overclock is, uh, you're going to have kind of strict uh, sort of memory, like, stability ranges. So even, so if previously your memory was, you know, so memtest you were getting, uh, and and I can't move around, but... If Memtest was getting 45, right, now you might be getting 50 on your memory, and now you're screwed. <laughs> so that's basically what I'm getting at, is now that your memory is hitting 50 degrees, that's what's causing the, the stability issues. It's not that your system suddenly became, uh, like, it's not that your memory overclock isn't stable in Memtest. No, it's just your memory overclock isn't stable when, when you have elevated air temperatures um, caused by something like a... Uh, open air exhaust GPU, um, which just happened to be the worst case scenario for that. So there, yeah, see, having an extra layer is a great idea because then I can just erase stuff. Um, and so the thing is, obviously you have the exhaust from the GPU. Now somebody's going to be like, but what if I have a blower card? Then all my hot air blasts out the rear of the card. Well, how, how very uh, <laughs> how very knowledgeable of you. Um, there's just still one issue with uh, blower cards, and that's... Oops. Nope, didn't want that button either. There we go, that's the one I wanted. So, with blower cards, sure, all your hot air is getting blasted out the rear. Also, exhaust air temperature on blower cards is, like, qu quite ridiculous. Um, you can easily have, like, 60 degrees output, which is also why they run so incredibly hot, because it's a very low volume of air being shoved through those heat sinks. Um, so, yeah, that's why they're so horrifically efficient, is just, like, you can't squeeze that much air through the card through its smallest cross-section. But, anyway, um, the thing is, with blower cards, uh, sure, your hot air is getting kicked out the rear, but that doesn't stop the PCB itself from getting very, very hot, too. So all of this of on your GPU, so right behind the core, your GPU's PCB can easily be 85 degrees Celsius. That That's no problem. That that can definitely happen. If you have uh, memory, like memory chips can actually also go into the 90 degree range as well. So yeah, back of the card can be absolutely scorching hot. This area right here, that tends to be where the VRM is located. That can easily be 100 uh, degrees plus. 
um, and you, you see 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 the issue. If we remove this this intake fan right here, and you basically only have direct forced airflow in this area of your case, um, you're now going to have basically heat rising off the back of the card. And sure, maybe by the time it reaches the top of your memory stick, it's going to mix with enough sort of just air floating around in your system, and it's not going to be that hot. But the lower half of your memory sticks can get very, very hot, and as a result, very unstable, because you have memory chips all along the entire memory stick. You have uh, a total of eight memory chips, and uh, I've just really screwed that up. But there, there's your eight. Actually, that's nine, isn't it? It's an ECC memory stick now. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, you get the idea. Basically, you have memory chips all along the memory stick. So if the me like if the last one memory chip on your memory stick gets too hot, the whole thing gets unstable anyway. So your blower card, depending on just how bad your case airflow is, is not really necessarily going to help you. Um, now, admittedly, if you have a lot of airflow in this area, then all of this, like, the thing is, the PCB, yes, it gets very hot, but the PCB is not actually that great at shedding heat, so in order to get the air temperature up to a very high, like, to get a high air temperature coming off of the PCB, you need a very low airflow, right? The air needs to be replaced slowly, because the PCB is kind of crap at actually transferring heat into the air, because if it wasn't, we wouldn't need heat sinks. Um, so the thing is, um, depending on your case airflow in this scenario, you could still end up uh, with some major cooling issues on your memory where basically the heat coming off of the back of your GPU um, is enough to basically cook, cook your memory sticks. So that's kind of the one of the concerns with memory stability testing um, in, in cases is just like, what's the actual air temperature inside your case? Because if your air temperature when you're running your mem test is much, much lower than when you're running... Uh, a game, then there's a very good chance that in, in game you're going to be really unstable compared to in a, in a memory test, especially if you're running memory that is, uh, you know, more temperature sensitive, something like Samsung B die. Um, in my experience, that's the most temperature sensitive I see, where it's just like you go over a certain temperature and suddenly you just get piles and piles of errors. Um, so that's kind of the like what one of the one of the concerns. Um, with uh, with the with memory stability testing, and another concern is is uh, actually so the reason why I wrote this wattage up here. So let's get this. Yeah, that works again. So the reason why I wrote this wattage up here is because you probably like you don't have well yeah you probably don't have an ambient air temperature sensor. Um, but one of the easiest way to get an idea of how hot the internals of your system are is to watch how much power is actually going into the system, right? So if you're running memtest and it's pulling about 100 watts, well, uh, you know, you might play a game and your system's now going to be pulling... Uh, I'm not sure why I'm making... there. So you play a game and your system might be pulling 400 watts, right? Where it's 300 watts into the GPU, 100 watts into the CPU and memory combination. Then there's also some effic uh, like efficiency lost from your power supply. But, uh, you know, depending on how you have your... Well, your power supply probably doesn't actually use the same air as the rest of your system. Though the heat will, like, again, heat does rise off of the back of a power supply. It's just, again, very insignificant unless you have absolutely god-awful airflow. Um... So, you know, one of the easiest ways to, to basically go like, okay, this could be an issue is because now you're dumping four times as much heat into the system. And depending on what your airflow, like airflow setup is, uh, your internal temperatures might be much, much higher right now. Um, and I've, I've realized that, yeah, the colors, but whatever. Um, so then your memory temperature could be a lot higher. So that's that's one consideration if you have, you know, if you run into like, hey, my memory is stable in mem test, but then I play games, it's not stable. This is very likely what's going on is like you're just roasting your, like your GPU is basically cooking your memory sticks. Now, the other thing that's worth considering is uh, the actual CPU itself, which leads to some other uh, kind of interesting stability issues. So here we have a very simplified version of a 8700K die. This right here is the iGPU. Um, this is a bunch of unused silicon. This right here is the memory controller. This right here is the system agent. Here is our ring. And then all of the, you know, you have cores, 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 more core, and well, so there's your six cores. So the thing that you can run into is, again, if you run memtest, your CPU is going to be pulling a relatively low amount of power. It depends on the CPU. Um, but it's not going to be running that hot. That's, like, my main point. Typically, you might be seeing, like, uh, 
60, you know, you, you might be seeing like 60 degrees Celsius on, on the CPU. Not really that hot. And the reason why this is noteworthy is because the system agent and the memory controller don't really produce a whole lot of their own heat. Um, so they don't tend to run that hot, and they're far more likely to basically run at whatever temperature the cores are at, rather than whatever they're based on whatever they're doing. So what you can run into is you run your mem test, right, and it's fully stable, and then you run something that loads up all of the cores to you know, 100%. So say AVX accelerated video encoding, AVX accelerated CPU rendering. I'm not even pulling up Prime95, but Prime95, of course, is going to do... Actually, Prime95 small FFTs will, funnily enough, not cause major memory stability issues because it's so... Like, the small FFT size is so small that it can basically sit in the cache of the cores and it never actually has to... act Like, it has so low memory usage that... Uh, you're probably not going to run into memory stability. But the point is, if your CPU cores are, instead of 60 degrees, up at 80 degrees, now your memory controller and IMC are significantly hotter than they were before. Um, and this can cause all kinds of stability issues, because, well, it just does. Um, this is one of the reasons that, uh, for example, well, it's actually just a fact with uh, 8700Ks, 9700Ks, 9900, like all of the 14 nanometer Intel CPUs, if you run them sub-zero, the memory controllers get better. And the main reason the memory controller gets better is because it's colder. So the memory controller itself, as well as the system agent, are both temperature sensitive. So if you run a memory test where... You know, your, your, your CPU is sitting at 60 degrees, which is totally normal. That's kind of where it should be sitting. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to be stable when you have a high memory usage, high CPU power consumption workload where, okay, your memory stick temperature might still be like, again, if we go back to the, um, you know, if we go back to the case example, uh, if you have the typical airflow setup, right, it doesn't really matter if there's 300 watts coming out of here because that's after the memory sticks, right? That just means this area is going to be hot. So your memory sticks might very well still be at 45 degrees, but the problem now for your stability is that the IMC and the memory control, like the IMC and the SA are going to be very, very hot, and that's actually going to potentially cause memory-related errors and uh, blue screens. So if you run into that kind of behavior where it's like, I passed mem test, but then I go do a blender render or I do a video encode and it just crashes on me. Well, this, this is probably why your CPU, uh, like you need to somehow test your memory, like you need to test your memory stability at high CPU temperatures. One of the best, better ways to do that is to run something like uh, Intel burn test because that runs really, really hot and you can set it to run very large amounts of memory. So it actually uses a decent amount of, like it puts a decent amount of load on the memory controller and system agent. There may be other stress tests out there that do a better job of that. I'm just not aware of them. I don't really actually take my daily system stability that seriously, which is why it's been black screening for the last, like why I've had two black screens in the last 24 hours, but that's a GPU problem, not, not a memory problem. I know that because it tells you what, what triggered it. So um, like you can look at the blue screens to figure out what triggered them. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you're, if you're doing memory overclocking and you're running into weird issues where it's like, but under all core loads, um, it's unstable, it's probably good because your memory controller is getting hot because the, the, again, the memory sticks won't be, unless you have a front, uh, a front intake, uh, water cooling setup, which, uh, like is optimal for your CPU temperatures, but obviously that'll elevate ambient air temperatures in your system, and then your memory gets unstable because now the air temperature is higher. Um, but that's just kind of like the version two of the GPU problem. Um, anyway, let's talk about Ryzen. So Ryzen is kind of kind of special because Ryzen. Oh, okay. So I just need to click up here before I start scribbling. Cool. Um, so Ryzen, you have this right here, which is known as the I/O die, and then you have your CCDs. Um, right, so those are your CCDs, and that's where all of your cores are. Um, your memory controller is this right here, so that's the unified memory controller. Um, it's not an integrated memory controller because it's separate from the cores, so it's the unified memory controller because all of the cores share it, so, you know, it's unified between them. Um, anyway, and then we have these, well, basically we have these right here, and also like these blocks right here as well, um, and that's your infinity fabric. Now, notice where the Infinity Fabric ends. It ends in the CCDs because it, connect, like, it connects the I.O. die to the CCDs. Now, 
Uh, you don't really have to be too worried about your memory controller on Ryzen to get uh, Ryzen third gen getting very hot because the I/O die itself just doesn't get very hot. It doesn't really pull a ton of power, right? Like th this will typically you're looking at like upper limits of the power consumption of the I/O die are sort of around 20 watts, um, which is nothing. Um, compared to what the cores can pull, which can easily be like an 8-core CCD, can easily top out in the 100-watt range. And this causes a rather interesting issue, where with the Infinity Fabric, you might be like, Memtest... Oh boy, I did it again. Um, so you run Memtest, right? And it can pass 1900 FCLK, uh, right? Because your core temperature... Right? When you're running your, your mem test, your core temperature is going to be, again, around 60 degrees. It just kind of happens to be... Like, it could be 50. Again, depends on your CPU overclock, your voltage, and that kind of thing. But you might be sitting around 60 degrees on your cores. Um, actually, Ryzen might probably boost pretty hard in mem test, so it might run a bit warmer than that. But, I, like, I've not... Like, I've been doing a bunch of Z390 stuff recently, so, yeah. Um, uh, kind of not really been... Like, well, I don't remember temperatures for everything off the top of my head there. So, you know, you're, you're running your uh, your memory st uh, stress test and your CCDs run around 60, maybe 70 degrees, and you're happy at your 1900 FCLK. It's, it looks pretty stable. Um, and then you run something like, say, uh, you know, you run IBT um, with like, eight gigs of memory usage or whatever you don't actually need to use that much but like the main point is is that the cores actually have to access the memory right um while also pulling a significant amount of power and now you might find that in ibt uh with the exact same configuration of like memory speeds and everything um you're now stuck at doing like 1866 fclk right um and that could very easily be because, and I, I just did it again, because under IBT, your core temperatures are going to be in the 90s, um, like it, it, assuming that you don't have a power limit. If you have a power limit enabled, they, they'll be a lot lower because it'll just throttle down to whatever power limit you have set. And though the thing is, is if you actually have like a, like if you have a 3800X, like that has a high enough power limit, like the stock power limit is over 100 watts. Um, yeah, IBT will happily take full advantage of a little over 100 watts on, on 8 cores, and it'll run really hot. So, so that, that's kind of the thing. So now you're, you know, the end of your Infinity Fabric Link is now running at 90 degrees, and that can very easily cause the stability drop that goes from, you know, 1900 FCLK under very heavy, heavy memory usage but low core usage to high core usage, low, lower memory usage, uh, much worse stability, right? Because now the end of that infinity fabric link, it's not this end of the memory system that's causing issues, it's this end. This end is no longer stable, and that's why you can run into interesting issues where it's like, but I pass mem test, but it's not stable for uh, multi-core high memory usage workloads. Cinebench is not a high memory usage workload. Okay, just gonna throw that out there. If there's something that'll run at like ridiculously unstable memory settings, it's Cinebench because it basically doesn't use the memory at all. Um, anyway, so yeah, th this is just something to consider with with memory overclocking. Is just like uh, if you run your memory st stress test and and it's stable, but then you put your system under a high load scenario where you're pulling more power than you were pulling in your memory stress test, and now you're suddenly getting random errors that are memory errors, it's because something in the memory system, so the memory sticks are getting hot because of your GPU, or I don't know, maybe you have some weird reverse airflow setup where you dump all the hot, like where, where you run your airflow like that, right? Which I've actually run a system like that. I had a, I had a daily system that ran that way. Um, wasn't very, like I was running DDR3, that wasn't particularly temperature sensitive, but um, so it didn't really matter, but like for, for BDI, I wouldn't do that because with BDI, that just completely screws you over. Um, but um, yeah, so you basically have a, a uh, you know, so like basically at higher power consumptions, if your memory starts getting unstable, it's probably because the internal air temperature is getting high or because your memory controller is getting hot or because your infinity fabric link is getting hot, right? Because the memory controller on these is not going to get hot. It's very, very far away from the very hot things, which are the CCDs. So, yeah, that's 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 it for this video. Um, 
just kind of like, man, this, this doesn't make any sense. It's a bit of a mess, but uh, <laughs> like, hopefully, you know, you found this somewhat interesting and, uh, yeah, th this is just something to that that I thought is worth keeping in mind um, with any kind of memory. Like if you're doing long term stability testing for for memory overclocks, because yeah, like you know, like I have heard of people where it's like, oh, I'll pass mem test, and it's just like, and then I play a game and it throws up a memory management error, and it's just like, well, your GPU is probably mem cooking your memory sticks. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, so another, so one last thing, there's an interesting issue that you can run into with uh, BDI specifically. Oh, I keep clicking on the wrong thing. So with BDI specifically, you can run into a rather interesting issue where, uh, let's take the eraser first. Um, and three, there. So what you can run into is that if you run the CPU on LN2, um, your CPU temperature is going to be really, really low. Like at idle, it's going to be sitting at minus 190 degrees Celsius. And the problem with this is the LN2 pot is actually going to be sucking. So like the LN2 basically sucks heat out of the CPU, but the CPU has a metal connection, relatively metal connection to the motherboard, right? Through, through the pins of the CPU socket. So the heat, like as the CPU gets colder, the CPU starts sucking heat out of the socket, which starts sucking heat out of the motherboard. Um, and the motherboard has power planes that basically you have like your V-Core power plane, which basically looks something like this typically, right? You have something like that for V-Core. Then there's a memory control like iGPU or uh, SOC power plane, which looks something like this normally. Um, and there's also a memory power plane that goes like that. Um, and, and up towards your, like, memory VRM normally lives up in this area. So you have a power plane that goes like this for your VDDR. And, well, the thing is, the heat from this power plane will get start getting sucked into the LN2 pot through the CPU, through, through everything. So over time, this will get very, very cold. And obviously, your memory sticks have a pretty serious... Well, actually, I, I drew the power plane for that wrong because th that power plane actually spans like the entire length of each memory stick as well, but whatever. Um, basically, the entire thing is made of copper and it gets cold um, because it's connected to the CPU, which is very, very cold. So this can lead to interesting issues where now your memory sticks are cold. Um, and with, say, BDI... Uh, some memory, some kits of BDI get horrifically unstable if they go below basically 20 degrees Celsius. So if you're at like minus 10 on your memory sticks, bye-bye memory overclocks. Now, admittedly, there's also some memory kits that actually scale with like uh, even Samsung BDI kits, like it's the most inconsistent IC I think ever. Because um, there are some kits which will actually get better as you cool them down, but um, with, uh, with a lot of kits, it's just like you go below 20 degrees and you start losing overclocking range and you go above 20 degrees and you also start losing overclocking range. Like they have a very specific sweet spot at 20 degrees Celsius is the only temperature that is acceptable and anything else not going to go very well. Um, so yeah, and, and you can basically run into an issue where it's like, oh yeah, the, the CPU is cold, so everything else gets cold, and then your memory gets unstable because it's now too cold. Um, which is one of the reasons why, well, that's like one of the main reasons why Kingpin Cooling offers the uh, socket heating thing, um, because basically that ensures that you don't get this problem where, like, it basically has a twofold purpose, where it's like, one, it stops your memory from freezing over from the uh, CPU being cold, two, it prevents water, con like, water and ice buildup in the uh, you know, surrounding the CPU socket, which on some platforms, like, it can get really bad because the cold, like, depending on how long you're running for, the cold will creep along the motherboard towards, like, your PCIe slots and downwards, so you can often end up with, or towards the rear I.O., and then the rear I.O. ends up all, like, your USB sticks get iced over and that kind of thing, and it's not fun. Um, so that, that's why the socket heater exists is basically, one, it prevents memory issues due to cold, it also prevents the ice buildup, so... Yeah, anyway, that was the last thing I wanted to talk about, which is just like, well, no, nobody really cares about the fact that your memory sticks can get too cold. So, um, and, and that can call, well, not many people care about the, this, but, you know, it's kind of neat. It's just like, yeah, you can run into that where some memory kits, if, if they get too cold, you suddenly get really, really unstable. So, um, like, I've seen people run, before the Kingpin cooling backplate, like heating, uh, like backplate, uh, back of socket heater came out, 
um, it wasn't, and actually I think st there's still people using them, is you'd have like heating elements attached directly to the memory sticks so that you could keep them at exactly 20 degrees Celsius. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is just something I thought, you know, is worth, uh, worth keeping in mind. And that's it for the video. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, you can support me uh, directly uh, through Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. And uh, other than that, you can also just buy a HOC t uh, merch on Teespring. Um, there's shirts, there's stickers, there's posters, that kind of thing. Uh, you can find a link to that down in the description as well. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.